Um, good morning. So let us start our lecture today. Um, last time we were uh, trying to understand the warm skin, right? So the, the meaning of the warm skin is the following. So it's supposed that we consider the equation. Um, x second plus pt x prime plus qt is equal to zero. This is the second order differential equation. Um, and the coefficients are either constant or non-constant, it doesn't matter, but it has to be homogeneous, right? Um, so we need two initial conditions. Uh, initial condition. <clears throat> um, basically, because this is second order, so you need to know two initial conditions um, in order to solve for the two constant, right? Um, so here we have x of t0, is x at zero, um, and x prime at t zero is equal to v zero. And we know from the previous uh, um, classes that uh, for the second order differential equation, normally we can have two, uh, uh, the solution group uh, depends on two functions, right? Two solutions. <coughs> so the solution will be the linear combination of two uh, solution x1 and x2, so c1 and c2, they are constant, right? c1 and c2, they are constant. All right? <clears throat> um, in order to solve, uh, in order to be able of, uh, of uh, solving um, uh, the two constants, c1 and c2, you need to have a system, right? So you want to have uh, x prime of t is c1, x1 t plus c2, x2 t prime, right? So which means that you have two uh, equations for the system, you have to at t0 is equal to c1 x1 t0 plus c2 x2 t0. And v0 will be v prime at t0, and this is c1 x1 prime, plus C2, X2 prime at T0. All right, um, I explain again. In the previous class, we consider second order differential equation of this type. Um, the coefficients are constant or not constant. We, uh, we don't really care about that. Um, because this is second order, you need two initial conditions, right? Uh, here I choose the two initial conditions to be X T0 is equal to X0. And the derivative of x t zero is v zero. <clears throat> now the form of the solution is is of this type, right? So x t is c one x one t plus c two x two t. Uh, because you want to solve for the two constants c one and c two, uh, what you do is you solve uh, the system, right? So the first thing is x t zero is x zero, so x zero is x t zero is c one x one t zero. Um, C2 x uh, T0, I just replaced T0 here. Right, so I had to replace T0 here. And again, in order to uh, solve uh, the second condition, I want to take a derivative. I get this guy, I want to replace T0 here. <coughs> so I'm going to have V0 is x prime, um, uh, is uh, x prime at T0. Um, and this is uh, as C1 x1 prime at t0 plus C2 uh, x2 time, uh, prime at t0, right? So this is a, a system of uh, uh, two equations, two linear equations of two unknowns. Uh, so in order uh, for this system to have a, a, a solution, um, we need to know that, okay, this quantity x1 t0 x2 prime of t0 minus x2 t0, x1 prime of t0 is different from t from 0, right? So you multiply this uh, coefficient with this coefficient and you subtract that with the product of this guy and this guy, right? And this is the so-called wall scan. So the wall scan is defined to be uh, the following wall scan. Um, is the determinant of the matrix x1, x2, right, and 
x1 prime x2 prime at time t0. At time t0 will be the determinant, right? <coughs> In the case that you don't, do, uh, you, you haven't learned linear algebra, it doesn't matter. So this is the, this is the notation for matrix. Uh, so I'm gonna take x1, x2 here, I put it here and here, right? And I'm gonna take x1 prime and x2 prime, I, I'm gonna put it here and here. And the determinant of this matrix is defined to be x1, x2 prime and x1 uh, prime x2. Right, so you have x1, x2 prime minus x1 prime x2. Of course, you have to evaluate at t0. Right? Any questions? Um, in the case that you haven't learned linear algebra, so so we have what? This is a matrix. Matrix two by two. Then you have a, b, c, d. So this is a, a notation for matrix two by two. You're gonna put uh, something here, A, B, C, D. Uh, for instance, one, two, three, four, or uh, three, five, minus five, six. Right, so this is just a notation. You put um, things together. So you have A, B, C, D. Uh, for instance, here I can put one, two, three, four. And then I define the determinant of that to be ID minus BC, right? So this is just a definition. Definition. <clears throat> so now here, we know from the previous class that in order to make sense of this equation, <coughs> you need to have xt1, x2 prime t0 minus xt2 minus x prime t0 um, is different from zero. So to have a, 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 a more general form, I'm gonna um, define this to be the one scan. The one scan, the one scan will be the determinant of the matrix x1, x2, x1 prime, x2 prime. All right, so this is one x1, x2, x1 prime, x2 prime, and I evaluate at the, the time t0. Um, so this is going to be x1 t0, x2 prime t0, minus x1 prime t0, x2 t0, right? Any questions? It's clear? All right, so, so you're gonna need that the world scheme is different from zero, at the time t0, all right? All right, so, So, uh, so let us try to do one exercise to understand this uh, um, uh, kind of thing. Right, so um, you have what? You have um, x second plus x is equal to zero, right? And the initial condition. Condition is now. Um, x0 is equal to 6, and x prime at 0 is equal to 3. All right? So let us try to solve this equation by using, um, I mean, and, and we try to connect that with what we uh, really learned from uh, the one scheme. So the first step to solve this equation is what? Yes? How do we want to find solutions x1 and x2 so we can use the characteristic method because it's often used in this equation? Oh, right. Can you sign it at the back of the paper, please? Uh, so basically, this is a, a homogeneous second order differential equation with constant coefficient. What you do is you write out the form of the characteristic equation. Right, so the character, the first step is always to write out the characteristic equation. So you have R square, first one is equal to zero. So 
So what are the two solutions of this equation? Yes? R equals I and R equals negative I. Yes, can you say in the back of your paper, please? So in this case, it is easy, right? So we have R squared is minus one, so R will be uh, I or minus I, right? Because R squared is one, which means that R squared, uh, R squared plus one is zero, this means that r squared plus one, uh, r, r squared is minus one, and this means that uh, r has to be i or minus i, right? And what are the two solutions of this equation? Yes? Well, because it's a, a complex root, and because we don't have any real part, our first solution is just going to be cosine two, which is e to the zero root one, mm -hmm. and our second solution will just be sine two. Yes, can you sign sign by the this? So here you, you write like this, right? Zero plus or minus one times i, right? So the real part will go to the exponential. So you have e to the zero t, because the zero here will go to the zero here, right? And then you're gonna have cosinus, and the one here is going to the one here. So the first solution is cosinus of t, and then the second solution is, is the sinus of t, right? So you change cosinus into sinus. Questions? Right? So I explain again. So here the solution is i or minus i. So this is zero plus or minus i, uh, and this means that uh, the zero is going to the exponential. You don't have anything because the exponential of zero is one. The second part is the one here, the one will go to the cosinus, and you get cosinus t. So the two solutions will be sinus and cosinus t. So the x1 of t will be cosinus of t, and x2 of t will be sinus of t. Right? That's good. So the, the general solution will be c1 cosinus of t plus c2 sinus of t, right? So now what should we do? Anyone else? Yes? Plug in the initial conditions mm -hmm. to solve for c. Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So you want to use the initial condition, right? So for c. Um, uh, so here I'm gonna compute x prime, and I have c1 sinus of t with a minus c2 cosinus of t, right? Uh, so the initial condition. Um, so I'm gonna have x zero is six, which means that six is equal to c1 cosinus of. Uh, zero plus C2 sinus of zero, right? So, so I wanna solve for C1 and C2. Uh, I plug T to be zero, so I have six is X zero, which is C1 cosine of zero plus C2 sinus of zero. I leave it here, there, and so um, I gonna have three, is equal to x prime, so this gives me minus c1 sinus of zero plus c2 cosinus of zero, right? So what is the Wolskian of this uh, uh, system? Yes. Yes, no, C1, C2. Uh, cosine is zero minus sine is zero, or plus sine is zero. Uh, cosine is zero squared plus sine is zero squared. Okay. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So the warm skin will be this guy minus this guy, right? So so the warm skin at times zero will be cosine of zero, sine of zero, minus sine of zero, cosine of zero. 
right? So I just put all of the <coughs> coefficient here. So I'm gonna put all of the coefficients: cosinus, sinus, cosinus, sinus, minus sinus zero, minus sinus zero, cosinus zero, right? And 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 the Gauss scheme will be the, the the product of of this guy minus the product of this guy. So I have cosinus of zero squared minus sinus of zero times minus sinus of zero, and this is one, right? So the Gauss scheme. It's different from zero, so you have a solution. Right? Any questions? Uh, so to compute a ground skin, it is, uh, it is not difficult because you're going to plug um, all of the, the initial condition inside. So you have 6 is C1 cosinus of 0 plus C2 sinus of 0. And then plug um, 3 is minus C1 sinus of 0 plus C2 cosinus of 0. Right? So the matrix will be cosinus of zero, sinus of zero, minus sinus of zero, cosinus of zero. Right? Questions? Uh, and, and to compute a quantum Walshian, you just multiply this guy and this guy, and you subtract that with this guy and this guy. So this is cosinus square minus sinus zero, minus sinus zero, and cosinus zero square is one, and the sinus is zero. Right? So this is zero. But for this, can you tell me what is C1 and C2? Can you say at the back of the paper? So from this system, you can see clearly that, okay, six is C1, cosinus zero is uh, one, so we have uh, C1 and C2 times zero, so, so this gives you C1 already, right? So from here, cosinus of zero is one, sinus of zero is zero. You have six is C1 plus C2 times zero, and this is C1. And the second one gives you zero is C1 times zero, plus C2 times one, and this is C2, right? So C1 is six and C2 is three. Um, so what is the, the form of the solution in this case? Yes? How we just plug it back into our general form, so F of T would be six times cosine T plus three times sine Yes, can you sign the microphone? So xt will be, so you're going to plug uh, 6 here, so this is 6 cosinus of t plus 3 times sinus of t, right? So this is the general form of the solution. Questions? Right? So basically, basically, um, in order to solve an initial condition, um, what you do is you use the math method of characteristic equation. After you solve uh, the characteristic equation, you find two solutions, x1 and x2, right? When you find the two solutions, x1 and x2, you write the general solution as c1, x1, plus c2, x2. And then you plug in the two initial conditions to solve for c1 and c2. So remember that um, you have a condition so that um, you have a solution for this system. Uh, so if the, the product of this guy and this guy minus the product of this guy and this guy is zero, you don't have a solution. But if it's different from zero, you have a solution. And, and you can solve for C1, uh, C1 and C2. Uh, basically, it's in this case, C1 is six and C2 is three. Questions? It's clear? Right. So, so far we know how to solve second order differential equation using the method of character characteristic um, equation. Uh, and you know how to solve um, the um, initial value problem by using the one skin, uh, not by using the quantum skin. The one skin is a way to check if you have a solution for, uh, for the C1 and C2, right? But, but after that you solve the system and you find C1 and C2. Questions? Yes? What do you do if your initial problem didn't equal zero equal one? Uh, so if this is so like what if x double prime plus x equals zero all the way on the left hand side? So I don't uh, you don't want zero, right? You want one first. No, like what if it's x double prime plus x equals three instead of x double prime plus x equals zero? 
so this problem, right? Mm -hmm. Where do you equal the number instead of zero? Ah, what if it is equal to five, for example? You want to ask for that? Yeah. This is going to be our next lecture. <coughs> this is called the method of undetermined coefficient. And we have a <coughs> we have a whole machinery to solve. Are what happened on here? Thursday? Uh, no, uh, probably the, at the end of the same uh, <coughs> So I gonna now I gonna teach you the reduction of met the order of method, and after that I gonna teach you the method of undetermined coefficient. <coughs> So in the case that you don't have a homogeneous equation, you have a new method, which is the method of reduction, uh, uh, the undetermined uh, coefficient method. Um, before going to that, let us try to learn a different method, which is the reduction of order method, which is uh, used for homogeneous equation, right? <clears throat> so this is the reduction of order. So you have t square x second plus 3tx prime plus 3x is 0, right? So in this case, you don't have a constant coefficient, right? So this is still second order, second order differential equation. This is homogeneous. Uh, and uh, but this is this is non constant, <clears throat> right? So this is a second order differential equation. Um, uh, this is homogeneous because the right hand side is zero, but the coefficients are not constant. Uh, so in this situation, you, you I suppose that I I have the first solution, and I want to find the second solution, right? So uh, uh, the situation is suppose that we know the first, uh, suppose that we know x1, and we want to find So this is the situation when you you know uh, in advance one solution and you try to find the second solution. This is the <coughs> in the three cases that we uh, learn. Um, which case? Right. So you have a second order differential equation. You know in advance one solution and you want to know the second solution. <coughs> in the three cases that we uh, we learn. Um, uh, which case correspond to this uh, situation? You know the first solution and you want to know the second solution. You have three cases, right? Yes? This is the case where the bell curve is zero and you have a, a double room. Right. Can you say the back of the paper, please? Basically, this is the same with the second uh, with the uh, case when you have the delta is zero, right? <coughs> Right, so this is the same with the situation when you have ax second plus bx prime plus cx is zero. Then you write out the characteristic equation. And then you compute the delta and you get zero. So you have only a double root, so this is minus b over 2a. Right? And then you have x1 is e to power minus b over 2a d, and you want to find x2. <clears throat> in the previous lecture, I told you that, okay, we don't know how, to, so we accept the form of x2 to be t times exponential minus b over 2a, but I didn't explain to you how we found that uh, x2, 
remember that? All right, so, so this is the same with this situation. You have ax second plus bx plus cx, uh, bx prime plus cx is zero. You write out a characteristic equation. You have a, a square plus br plus c. <coughs> you compute the delta. You have b squared minus 4ac is zero. Um, so in the previous class, we I mentioned that, okay, in this case, you have a double root, which is minus b over 2a. So x1 should be exponential of minus b over 2at. And then I told you that, okay, x2 is t times e to the power minus 2a, uh, t times e to, to, to the power um, e to the power minus b over 2at, right? But I didn't mention to you how I can find this t. And basically, basically in order to find a t, we need a reduction of order method. All right, so, so today we're gonna learn how to find, how do we get this t in this case. And, 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 and the situation that we consider now is this equation. This equation is even harder because you have non-constant coefficient, right? Here you have t squared, here you have three t, and you want to solve this equation, I give you one um, solution, and you, want, you have to find a second solution. So in this case, the first solution is um, is t. So so x one is so let us check if x one is the solution of this equation, right? So x one is t, which means that x one prime is one, uh, and then um, x one second is zero. I think I miss uh, I miss a t. So, so, so when I, I, I plug everything back into this equation, I have three, um, t squared, x1 second, plus three t x1 prime, minus three x1. <coughs> so, so, so what is the value that I get? Now I, I suppose that the function x1 um, is given to be t, right? So, so I compute three uh, t squared x one second plus three t x one prime minus three x one. So, what is the final value? Yes. Uh, why is it zero? Yes. Can you say the back of the paper, please? So you plug this value into the equation. You have t squared times zero plus three t times one minus three times t. So this gives you zero. All right. So basically, I give you one solution in advance. All right. So so x one is equal to t is a solution. All right. Speed. <coughs> so basically, I give you one solution, and you have to find the second solution. So how do I find the second solution? So this is tricky because you're gonna find, you suppose that x2 is b times x1, and this is b times t. <coughs> All right? Um, so this is a, 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 a the, the general, uh, the, 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 the key idea of the reduction of order method you suppose that uh, x2 is v times x1, right? So basically this v is x2, or in other words, uh, I don't suppose, I just denote, denote v to be x2 over x1, right? <coughs> I denote the quotient between x2 and x1 to be v, which means that x2 is going to be v times x1, all right? It's clear. So to find a second solution, I denote uh, x2 over x1 to be v, right? And then I can write x2 in terms of x1. Now let us try to, uh, to compute, to plug this form into the equation. So I have x2 prime 
is v times x1 prime, and this gives me v prime x1 plus v x1 prime. All right? So I explain again. Suppose that I have already one solution, which is x1. All right? I define x2 of x1 to be v. It's just a definition, right? Uh, now x2 is v times x1. I'm going to write everything uh, from uh, uh, using this uh, form. So x2 prime will be v x1 prime, and this gives me v prime x1 plus v x1 prime. All right? Uh, so I'm going to have x2 prime is going to be v prime x1 plus v x1 prime prime so this gives me v second x1 plus v prime x1 prime plus v prime x1 prime plus v x1 second right uh, so so i'm gonna be more explicit this is v prime x1 prime plus v x1 prime prime. Alright, so I explain again. Um, x2 is v times x1. So x2 prime will be v prime, v x1 prime. This is v prime x1 plus v x1 prime. Alright? It's clear? <coughs> I compute the second derivative. So x2 prime will be v prime x1 plus v x1 prime. And this is v prime x1 prime plus v x1 prime prime. So this is v second x1. This is v prime x1 prime. Uh, this is v prime x1 prime. This is v x1 second. Questions? It's clear? So this is product proof. Uh, now, I'm going to combine this and this. So I have v second x1 plus 2 times v prime x1 prime plus v x1 second. Right? Questions? Okay. Explain again. So I know in advance that x1 is equal to t is the solution of this equation. All right? Um, I want to find a second solution. I don't know what it is. So I call, I denote uh, the, 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 the ratio between x1 and x2 uh, to be v, which means that x2 has to be equal to v times x1. I don't know what is v. And we we will try to find out what is v. So x1, I'm gonna compute the derivative. x2 second, uh, x2 prime will be v x1 prime, and this is v prime x1 plus v x1 prime. All right. Uh, uh, x2 second will be v prime x1 prime plus v x1 prime prime. Right. The derivative of this guy is v prime x1, and this is v prime x1 prime. Right. And this is v x1 prime prime, so this is v prime x1 prime, this is v x1 second. This is the product group, right? Clear questions? So I'm gonna group this guy and this guy, I get, I get x, v second x1 plus 2 times v prime x1 prime plus v x1 second, right? Now let us, right now what is the form of x, x2 prime? Right, so basically I have, this is x2 second, and this is x2 prime, right? So uh, now what is x2 prime in this case? Case uh, x one is t. What is the value? Uh, uh, v plus v yes. One. Yes. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So I'm gonna use all of the things that I computed here, right? All right. So I'm gonna replace everything inside. Uh, so I have v prime times t. Um, the other one gives me v. All right. Um, so now I, I compute x2 second. So what is x2 second? Yes? V double bond v plus v double bond. Can you sign at the back of the paper, please? 
So you have V double time T uh, plus two V time. All right? Questions? Uh, right. Um, now I'm gonna plug everything back into the original equation. So I have V two second plus three V X two second minus three X two is equal to zero. <coughs> All right, so I'm gonna replace everything here, right? So you, you have t square x2 second will be uh, t square v second t plus 2 v prime, right? This is the because x2 is the solution, you have to have this to be zero, right? So you have t square x two second plus three t x prime minus three x two is zero. Now I have to compute each each term in in, 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 in this equation, right? So t square x two second will be t square v prime v second t plus two uh, v prime. So this gives me v second t three plus two v prime t square. All right. This is a lot of computation, but finally you you have a very simple form. Right? Questions for that? All right. So I'm gonna compute t square x two second because because in the form of x two you have this, right? Uh, so t square x two second will be t square v second t plus two v prime, um, which means that here you have v second t cubed plus two v prime t square. Questions? So I now I'm gonna compute the second guy. The second guy is 3t x2 prime and this is 3t. I'm gonna replace this guy here. So you have v prime t plus v. Right? So you have v second t this way plus 3t v. Alright? Right, so, so basically I'm gonna replace it here and I'm gonna replace this here. Right, so I explain again. <coughs> because x2 is a solution, you have t square x2 second plus 3t x prime minus 3x is zero. So what I do is I replace t square x2 second. So t square x2 second can be computed using this formula. I have t square v second t plus 2 v x prime and this gives me this guy. Um, so x2 second is v prime t plus v, and so this gives me 3t x second, and this is um, v prime 3t squared plus 3t, um, uh, 3t v, right? It's clear? Now I compute 3 minus 3x. Three uh, minus 3x will be uh, minus 3. Now I'm gonna put everything together, right? So I'm gonna put this guy, this guy, this guy together. So, so which means that here I have I have v cube, v, uh, v second t cube plus two v prime t square plus v prime three t square plus three t v minus three v t is zero, right? It's clear. So here I have t square x two second plus three t x uh, two prime minus three x two is zero. Um, so I compute it and I know that t square x two second is v second t uh, x cube plus two v prime t square. I know that three t x two prime is this guy and I know that minus three x two is this guy. So I just put all of the three com um, uh, computation together and I get zero. So. There is uh, uh, something that we can see from this equation. So can I simplify this? How can I simplify? So, 3t in the minus 
I had a bunch of the paper of this. So I can combine this guy and this guy, right? And this and this cancel out. Right? So you have B second C cube plus five B prime C squared is zero. Right? Can but can an S still uh, simplify it? Yes. Yes, can you sign the bank of paper please? So here I still have a T squared, so I have T squared V second T plus five V prime is zero. So T squared is never zero because T is a variable. So this has to be zero. V second T plus five V prime is zero. Right? So here I factorize T squared. So I have T squared V second T plus five V prime is zero. So finally I have V second T plus five V prime is zero. So how do I solve this equation? Yes? No, no. This is uh, non-constant. Second order non-constant differential equation. Homogeneous. Any ideas how to solve it? Right, so after a long computation, uh, I reduce this equation into a new one. So you have v second t plus five v prime is zero. Right? So this is the equation for for, for x two, and this is the equation for v to be x two over x one. Right? Okay. This equation is difficult to solve because this is. Um, second order differential equation with non-constant coefficient. This is still second order differential equation with non-constant coefficient, but this is easier. Why is it? This is easier. So, um, yes? Yes, excellent. Can you sign the back of the paper? This is a very good idea, right? So you, you can define V prime to be W. Now this is nothing but a first order differential equation, right? So you have, so then V second is W prime. So you have W prime T plus five W is zero. So basically, this is a second order differential equation, but it is a first order differential equation if you know how to change it, right? Uh, so the equation for X2 is, is very difficult to solve, um, but, but after you uh, try to write the equation for X2 over X1, it is easier to solve because this is still, though this is still a second order differential equation with non-constant coefficient, you can reduce it to a first order differential equation, right? So we basically we can basically we uh, reduce the order from two to one. So this is why they call the reduction of method, uh, the reduction of order. Right? So basically, in this case, um, solving the equation for x2 is difficult. So what you do is you write the equation for x2 over x1, which is v. You still get a second order differential equation. But this second order differential equation can be simplified uh, into a first order differential equation. If you put v prime to be w, then v second will be w prime. Then you have w prime t plus 5w is 0. Now this is the first order differential equation. So you, you, you reduce the order, and this is why the method is named reduction of order method, right? Now, how can I solve this uh, equation for W? Yes? Uh, no, this is not general, this is easier than, yes? Yes, this is separable. Yes, can you sign the back of the paper? So to solve this one, you use separable uh, 
uh, so this is the, uh, um, uh, the separation of variables method, right? Um, now uh, we have what? We have w prime t plus 5w is 0. So w prime t is minus 5w, right? Um, so we have dw over dt, t minus 5w, right? So you have dw um, over w is minus 5 over t. Right? Right? So, I explain again. Basically, after you reduce the order, you have a first order differential equation, and this can be solved using the separation of variables method. Now, how do you solve it? You have w prime t plus 5w is 0. Now, you have w prime t is minus 5w. W prime is dW over dt, so you have dW over dt times t is minus 5w, right? You divide w here and you multiply uh, t and dt over there, you have dW over w is minus 5 over, d over t, dt, right? So how can I solve this one? Mm -hmm. Yes? In, yes. Can you sign, sign both sides of the paper, please? Uh, so this is, um, in order to solve this guy, you need to use uh, integration. Right, so I have minus 5 over t dt. So the antiderivative of, uh, of this is log w is log of t to the power minus 5. So, so this is, so I integrate both sides. I have minus 5 log t, and this is log of t to the power minus 5. All right? I integrate both sides. Uh, dw over uh, w gives me log w. Uh, dt over t gives me log t, but I have the factor minus 5 outside. So this is minus 5 log t, and this is log of t to, to the power minus 5, right? So which means that W is T to the power minus 5, all right? And which means that uh, V, so now, I want to find V. How can I find V? Yes? Can I find the Yes, can you send the microphone? So I have V prime is w and this is t to the power minus 5 so v is what right so i have w is t to the power minus 5 so v prime is t to the power minus 5 yes can you say the back of the paper please so v will be t to the minus 4 over minus 4 plus some constant. Um, so basically, uh, what is x2? Yes? I just had one question. When we integrated the, the dw over dw expression, why can we ignore the constant? Yes, I, I, I didn't put a constant here. Uh, but in general, you, you have to put a constant. But for here, uh, I just ignore it for the, for the sake of simplicity. Yes, so in general you have to put a constant, right? So you have to put a constant. Um, so basically, yes, you have a constant here. But uh, for instance, for, for in, in this example, let us forget about constant because we have a lot of constant later. Uh, so so V will be T to the power minus 4 over minus 4. Uh, can you say it back there, please? Um, uh, now, what is the value of X2? So x2 will be vt, right? So this gives me t to the power minus 3 over minus 4 plus ct. All right? 
questions? Right, so I explain again. The idea of this uh, uh, reduction of the method is that, okay, suppose that you have a first solution. What you do is, is you suppose you try to find the equation for, uh, so suppose that you have x1, right? You want to solve for x2. So if you don't consider the equation for x2, but you consider the equation for x2 or x1, you are gonna get something like this. Because x2, x1, their solution of the first order differential equation, v has to be the solution of a, a so because x1 and x2, they're both solution of the second order differential equation, v has to be a solution of a second order differential equation. But, but the equation for v is easier because even though this is a second order differential equation, if you put w to be v prime, then you get a first order differential equation. And then because it's first order differential equation, you can solve by uh, the separation of variable method, and then you get, um, um, after you solve um, for v, you can trace back to find x2, which is v times x1. Questions? It's clear? Right, so, uh, Right, so, uh, so, so we're gonna consider another example. And then, uh, so in the second example, we're gonna consider an equation which is similar to this one. And in the last example, we're gonna go back to the, uh, uh, to the case where um, delta is zero. Right, so let us consider another uh, equation. So in this case, you have what? You have x second minus t x prime plus x is equal to zero. So in, in this case, you have x one is t, right? Um, I have this equation, x second minus t x prime plus x is zero, and I give you in advance that x one is t. Check, right, so we check. So x one prime will be one, x one second will be zero, right? So x one prime minus t x one prime plus x one is zero minus t times one plus t, and this is zero, right? So, for this equation, I give you in advance the solution x1. So, um, x second minus tx prime plus x is zero. I claim that x1 is equal to t, is the one solution of this equation, right? Uh, I check, so x1 prime is one, x1 second is zero, right? I plug, I plug everything back into the equation. You have x1 second minus tx1 prime plus x1, this is zero minus t times one plus t, and this is equal to zero, right? Now I want to find x2. So what should I do? Yes? Uh, first step would be to define v as x2 over x1. Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? Now we need to find x2. So to find x2, we define v to be x2 over x1, and find v equation for v. All right, so I'm gonna define v to be x2 over x1, uh, because if I stick with the equation of x2, I don't know how to do it, right? The equation for x2, is the same with the equation for x1. <coughs> All right, so the equation for x2 is the same with the equation for x1. And uh, if I stick with the equation for x2, I don't know how to solve it. What I do is I consider the, the, the fraction x2 over x1, which gives me a new function, and I want to find the equation for v. And basically, the equation for v will be, sim will be still second order uh, with non-constant coefficient, but I can reduce the order. 
right? So let us try to find the equation for it. So you have what? You have x2 is x1 times b by x2 prime is x1 b prime. So what is x2 prime? Yes? One B prime, yes. So can you stand at the back of the camera, please? So you have B prime X one plus X one prime B, <coughs> and this gives me B prime T plus B, right? So let me be a little bit uh, slower. So this is B prime times T plus T prime B. So this is B times T plus B. All right. It's okay. um, right. So I I have x two is x one times v. X two prime will be x one v prime. This give me v prime x one plus uh, x one prime v. All right. Um, so so x one is t. So you have v prime t. X one prime will be t prime. So this give me v prime t plus v. It's okay. Questions. Yes? How can the t prime is equal to 1? t prime is equal to 1 because t prime is more. This is the derivative of uh, um, the derivative of t is 1, right? The derivative square is 2t. Okay. So the derivative of, of t is 1, the derivative of t square Right. This is a derivative. T prime is the derivative of t. Right. So this is uh, the same with uh, the derivative of t n is n t n minus one. Okay. So the derivative t uh, t has to be one. Um, so you have x two second will be b prime t plus b prime. So what is x2? Yes? So it would be v double prime t plus v prime t prime plus b prime. Yes. Can you send the back of the paper, please? So you have v second t plus v prime t prime plus b prime. And so what is this? Can I simplify this expression? Yes? Can you say the back of the paper, please? So this gives me v second t plus v prime. So t prime is 1, so you have v prime. This v t plus 2 v prime. Right? Because the derivative of t is 1. Right? So, so now I have the value of, um, of x2 prime, which is v prime t plus v. And I have x2 second, which is v prime, v second t plus two v prime. Watch this. Uh, so, so now I'm gonna use these equations, right? So I have x two second is equal to v second t plus uh, two v prime. All right. Um, I have minus t x prime. So what is minus t x prime? Yes? Minus t squared divided by t. Can you say the back of the paper, please? So I multiply t with this guy. So I have minus t v prime t plus b. And this gives me minus t square v prime plus t. All right, so x2 will still be v. It's good. Now I put everything together. I have x2 second minus t x prime plus x2 is zero. Um, so I have what? I have uh, minus t square v, uh, v second t plus two v prime, uh, 
uh, minus t square v times plus t v. Uh, this is minus t v plus v t is zero. Questions? Right. So after I compute everything, I gonna put everything into the equation. Right. So I have what? I have v second t plus two v prime because here I have uh, x to second, right? Here I have minus t x prime, which is minus c square v prime minus t v. So here I have minus c square v prime minus t v. Um, this is minus t x prime. Here I have x two, so I replace v t, and the sum of everything is zero. Now, uh, how can I simplify this equation? So I can this guy and this guy cancel, and I put this and that together. So I have v prime t plus two minus t square v prime is zero. Right. So um, after I put everything together, right, um, the minus v t and plus v t they cancel. I put. 2v prime minus t square v prime together, so I have 2 minus t square v prime. All right? Questions? Uh, now, how can I solve this equation? Yes? So v prime is just w and v double prime is just w prime? Yes. Can you sign the back of the perfect of this? Uh, so now I, I put v prime to be w. Uh, so I have w prime t plus 2 minus t square w is 0. All right? So now in this case, I'm going to do the same trick as before. I put v prime to be w. Um, then I have t w prime t plus 2 minus t squared w is 0. So I reduce the order, right? So I reduce the order. Reduce the order from 2 to 1. Right? So the first equation is a second order differential equation, but because I put w, um, I denote v prime to be w, then I have a new equation, w prime t plus 2 minus t square v, w is 0, and this is a first order differential equation, <coughs> right? And this is easier to deal with because the order is smaller. Uh, and this is why we call this method the reduction of order method. Right? Now, how can, how can I solve this first order differential equation? Uh, yes? Yes. Yes. So, this first order differential equation, can you sign the back of this? So, this uh, equation is separable. Um, so, I'm going to do the uh, uh, separation of variables method. I have nothing prime t plus 2 minus t squared w is equal to 0. All right? Right, so so w prime will be dw over dt. t plus 2 minus t squared w is equal to 0. So dw over dt times t is t squared minus 2 times w. Right? So to solve this equation, I know that w prime is dw over dt. So I have dw over dt times t plus 2 minus t squared w. I put this to the other side, so I have t squared minus 2 times w. So how can I continue? Yes? You move the w to the left side, and then divide by t to get rid of the t to the other side. Yes, can you say the back of the paper? Uh, so, so, so I put W here and I put all of the T there. Uh, so I have DW over the W is uh, T squared minus 2 over T DT. Right? And this is uh, T over 2 T DT. Right? So what should I do? And I 
Yes. 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 Can you sign at the back of the paper, please? Now I need to read both sides. Uh, so the left hand side, I get log, uh, log of the view. On the right hand side, I have t squared minus 2 log t plus a constant c. Right? So now I integrate both sides, right? Yes? Would it be t squared over 2? t squared. Can you sign at the back of the paper, please? Yes. So this is this way over two. Uh, uh, so I integrate both sides. Um, the dw over w gives me log of w. Uh, so t square minus two over t is t minus two over t. So the <coughs> antiderivative of t is t square over two, and the minus two over t dt gives me minus two log t. Right. So, now how can I find a view? Yes? Yes. Can you say, um, at the back of the paper, please? So I'm going to take the exponential. So that view will give me exponential of t squared over 2 minus 2 log t plus a constant c. Right? Questions? It's clear. So, what is the value of this guy? Yes? Well, it's, it will be e to the t squared times 2, and then that you can multiply that by e to the negative 2 log t, which simplifies to 2 to the negative 2, and then times e to the constant c. Right. Can you say the back of the paper, please? So this, I have e to the t squared over 2, right? First one is always like that. Uh, e to the power minus log t. And then e to the c. All right? It's clear. So this e to the t squared over 2 is the same e to the power minus 2 log t. And then I have e to the c, right? So how can I simplify this? Yes? So this is e to the t squared over 2 times t to the negative 2 times c? Yes. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So here I have what? I have e to the t squared over 2 times t to the power minus 2, right? Uh, and then I have uh, constant c tilde. So the constant c tilde, I'm going to put it in front. So this is the b. Now, how can I find a v? Yes? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So basically, w is b. So you have v prime is c tilde, t square over 2, times t to the power of minus 2. All right. Uh, so two pi v, I'm gonna take the antiderivative of this guy. But this doesn't have an explicit formula, right? So I just leave it there. So what is the form of I two? Right. So I explain again. Here v prime is this guy. Uh, so I have to take the antiderivative, but this one doesn't have a, a, an explicit formula in, in all of the uh, classical functions that we have. So I just leave it there. So what is the form of, uh, yes? X2 is just that times two. Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So X2 is just this guy times t. Questions? Yes? Do you not have to write out a uh, constant in the expression for vt because there is no explicit antiderivative? The vt equals c times that integral? 
yes. you don't have to include the big box on the outside because no, no. there's no no yeah. I just said that this is uh, an antiderivative. This is, this is uh, just a formula for the antiderivative. So basically, you don't have to put a constant or anything there. Uh, so you can, you can just leave it there. Now, x2 will be c tilde times x1 times vt. Uh, so it's going to be c tilde t times this antiderivative. Questions? It's clear. So basically, what is the key idea of the reduction of order method? The reduction of order method uh, is uh, uh, in order to use the reduction of order method, you have to consider the equation for x2 of x1. So x1 is given. Um, so when you try to solve the equation for x2, you need to consider the equation for x2 of x1. Um, so this equation for x2 of x1 is very nice because even if it's a uh, second order differential equation, um, you can simplify it to a first order uh, differential equation and you solve it by simple proof, right? Um, and then this is why in the um, in the case where delta is zero, you can given x one you can find x two. Now let us consider one um, last example. Um, so you have x second minus x prime plus x is equal to zero, right? So can you tell me what is the equation? Uh, what is the solution x1? Yes. yes. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? So for this one, right, uh, the characteristic equation will be uh, square minus 2r plus 1 is 0, right? Uh, so in this case, you have as, um, x second minus 2x prime plus x is 0. So the characteristic equation is x squared minus 2r plus 1 is equal to 0, right? Uh, so basically, this has a double root because I can, I can write like this, r minus 1 squared, right? Uh, so r minus 1 squared is 0, which means that r is 1. So I have one solution, which is x1t is e to the t. Right. So this is what um, we learned from the previous class. That um, for this equation, the first equation, the first solution is e to the t, right? And I mentioned in the previous class is that the second solution is t times e to the t. But I didn't explain why. Now let us check why is it uh, the case. Uh, basically, this is the reduction of all the methods. So in the previous class, in the previous class, we said that x2 is t times e to the t, and this is t times x1 t, right? This is what we discussed in the previous class. We said that, okay, um, e, x1 is e to the t, then x2 has to be t times x1. Now, let us check. Alright? Alright? It's clear? Now, how can I check? Uh, I mean, how can I find x2 is t times x1? Yes? Is the derivative of x1? Uh, no, I'm, uh, so I, I, I want to use the reduction of order method to find this t. Suppose that we don't know t, how can I find it? Yes? So we said you have to uh, equal x2 minus x2? Yes, can you sign the back of the paper, please? So we're going to define vt to be x2t over x1. Yes? Can you sign the back of the paper? Right? So we're going to use the reduction of order method again. Uh, by defining v to be x2 over x1, right? And you will see that at the end of the day, you get v is equal to t. Now, I have x2 is then v times x1, all right? Uh, uh, 
so what is x? So basically, this is v times e to the t. So what is x to prime? Yes? No, x to prime. You say at the back of the paper, please. So you have v times e to the t prime plus v prime e to the t. So this is v e to the t plus v prime e to the t. All right? It's good. Uh, so now I'm going to compute x to second, which is v e to the t plus v prime e to the t prime. So what is x to second? Yes? Um, v second e to the t plus t v prime e to the t plus v prime. Can you sign the back of the paper, please? Um, so I'm going to have v prime e to the t plus v e to the t plus v second e to the t plus v prime e to the t. So this gives me v e to the t plus two times uh, v prime e to the t plus v second e to the t. It's good. Questions? Now, I explain again. In the previous class, we claim that x2 has to be t times of x1. But we didn't explain why. So now let us try to explain this by using the reduction of our method. Right? So now I define v to be x2 over x1. Um, so x2 will be v times x1, and this is v e to the t, x2 prime, x2 prime will be the derivative of this guy. This is v e to the t plus v prime e to the t. x2 second, I compute that. I have v e, uh, v e to the t plus 2 v prime e to the t plus v second e to the t, right? Questions? Now, I'm going to put everything together, right? Um, I'm going to put the um, x2 second minus x2 prime plus x2 zero, right? So I'm going to put v e to the t plus 2 v prime e to the t plus v second e to the t minus 2 times v e to the t minus 2 times v prime e to the t plus v e to the t is 0. Right? So I put everything together. So x second is v e to the t plus 2 v prime e to the t minus v second e to the t minus 2 x prime will be minus 2 v e to the t minus 2 v prime e to the t x 2 will be v e to the t. And the sum of everyone is zero. Can I simplify this equation? How? Yes. Um, v e to the t plus v e to the t and the minus two v e to the t cancel. Mm. Same for two v prime e to the t and minus two v prime e to the t. Can you say at the back of the paper, please? So you see that this guy cancel with this guy and this guy, right? Here you have v e to the t. Here you have minus 2 v e to the t, and here you have v to e to the t. So they are all cancelled. Uh, and another thing is 2 v prime e to the t cancelled with 2 v prime e to the t. Right? So basically, v prime e to the t is 0. Now, can I simplify this? Yes? V double prime is zero. Can you can sign at the back of the paper, please? So this is non-zero, so you have V double prime is zero. Right? And this is uh, so how can I solve this one? Yes? Can you sign the back of paper? This. So basically, this can be solved explicitly with V, right? You just take the twice derivative. 
So, so but, but let us follow the reduction of order method. So I define w to be v prime, right? So I define w to be, so, um, so we're gonna continue on, on Thursday.